So in that case, we can start. We are still uh, under the umbrella of transforming one image to another image. So you take an image as an input, you're outputting another image. And under this umbrella was uh, semantic segmentation, where you would do per pixel classification. Uh, the other one was super resolution, denoising, in painting, uh, or even colorization. Another category is pose estimation. And what is the idea here? I want uh, you guys to have to keep this in mind that uh, a keyboard, a mouse, a trackpad, uh, these are not the only ways of interacting with a computer. There are other ways of interacting with your computers. And this is human computer interaction. For instance, you can stand in front of your camera, do some gestures, and according to some gestures, maybe an animated character in a movie or in a video game is moving along with you. We can wear sensors, but that's gonna end up being too costly. What if it is possible to use your webcam to do the same thing? And that's the idea of pose estimation. You can also use it for doing surgery from some place. A famous doctor in India is doing a surgery on a person in the US. And it is only, it's gonna be very cheap, only based on images. And let's try to do that. Uh, Depose is the first paper that tried to answer this question using deep neural networks. There are other papers trying to do it before deep learning, but this is the first one that used deep learning. Perhaps it is not the best method to do it these days. Maybe it's a little bit old, but it's gonna help us prove the concept and introduce the challenges. What you want to do is this. You take as input an image, and then you want to output the key points. Where is the shoulder? Where is the head? Where are the knees? Uh, where is the neck, etc. And as you can see, this is a challenging problem because some of the joints are really small and actually barely visible, like the right wrist of this person, or your images could be highly occluded. For instance, the left side of this person's body is basically occluded, we don't see it. And then your neural network has to guess the same way that the human is guessing where the left hand is, where the left shoulder is, etc., left knees. So that's the idea. You have a number of body joints and let's call that K to make this more precise. You have K body joints, maybe 10 body joints, head, neck, left shoulder, right shoulder, wrists, elbows, knees, uh, you name it, ankles. What you want to do, you want to output a pose vector per each body joint, you're gonna have a two-dimensional vector. And then you can put everything in a 2K dimensional vector altogether. And that's gonna give you a pose vector. Each one is gonna give you the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, or the pixel coordinates corresponding to that joint. That's what you're outputting. What is your data like? Your data are, are going to be in the form of images. So X is going to denote images and Y is going to denote your pose vector. That's your data. So far, so good. The problem is these objects or human could end up being a small part of your image or a big portion of your image, your entire image. You have two choices. You can put a bounding box around your human being or parts of your human. We are going to see why parts of it or that box in the trivial case could be the entire image because your images could have different resolutions in your data set and you want to normalize by the size of your image or by the size of the human inside your image. And there are some bounding box uh, algorithms, basically uh, detection algorithms that we're gonna go through perhaps next week, starting next week. But let's assume you have such boxes that you put around your human being. Or if you, want to do, if you don't want to assume it, assume it's the entire picture, the entire image. How do you define these boxes? There is a center for that box, maybe here, and they're gonna have a height and a width. And your center has an X coordinate, Y coordinate. That's your box. Why do we care about the box? Because now we are gonna be able to normalize our output data. You take the pulse, which is a vector. It's a pair of pixels for joint I. Maybe this is your ankle. You subtract the center of the box, 
and then divide it by the height and the width of the box. And everything that you see here is uh, element-wise. So you are dividing the x coordinate by w, the y coordinate by h. And that's going to give you the normalization of your labels. Now your labels have the same scale. What, ne what is next? We can do this for every single joint in your pose vector, for every single i from 1 up until k. You normalize everything. We can normalize another thing, your image or crop of your image by cropping a box or by cropping your image according to this box. Now everything is going to be normalized. And this is an important step because your images could have different resolution. The people appearing in your uh, images could have could end up having different resolutions. And then you can write down the pose estimation as a regression problem. Now, this is where your neural network is going to come in. Your neural network could be as simple as AlexNet, which is going to take as input an image. It is parameterized, and it's going to output 2K uh, values, a vector that is 2K dimensional. Now, let's assume this neural network is trained. It is trained on normalized data. Now you have to denormalize. The first step is you take your image, you normalize it because your neural network likes normalized inputs. You first normalize it, push the image, the normalized image through your convolutional neural network. Now you're going to get a bunch of pose vectors that are normalized. To denormalize them, you're going to use the inverse of this function here. And because it is linear, you can just compute the inverse. It exists. And this is going to give you the pose predictions in absolute image coordinates. This is assuming that your neural network is trained. What if it's uh, not trained and you want to train it? Your neural network likes normalized inputs and outputs. So go ahead and normalize your data. And that's going to give you a normalized training set. And write down a mean squared error loss. You take an image, the corresponding pose vector, they are coming from your normalized data. Now you're solving a regression problem. Yi is two dimensional. If you remember here, it has the x coordinate, y coordinate of your pixel minus the prediction of your neural network, square it and do it for every single joint. And then that's gonna give you a prediction. What is next? I think visually speaking, the algorithm is gonna become more clear. An image goes in, it's gonna have a size of 220 by 220. You have your AlexNet here. These are convolutional. These are fully connected. Now you're outputting the location of every single joint. So you're outputting this location. And then you know the ground truth, you subtract, square it, and that's going to give you a loss function. But this is not enough. This is going to give you coarse estimates for the joint locations. And why is that? By using a neural network like AlexNet, you are solving this problem that there could be occlusions and then to decide the location of the left shoulder of this person, you need to look at the global context of an image. AlexNet is going to do that for us or any other convolutional neural network is going to do that, for, do that for us. It's going to give us a global picture of the image, especially the deeper you go. But then at the same time, the details matter. You need to focus around a joint and then fine tune its location. And that's why you're going to have a cascade of pose regressors. What do they do? This was the first stage. In the second stage, you already have a good estimate of the joint location. So you already have a good estimate of the joint location, which is this yis minus one. You know the ground truth. This is your labels. And all your subsequent neural networks have to do is to do a regression on this uh, displacement, on this refinement. Not only that, you can also focus around the box or in a box around the joint. So you can zoom in on your image from one step to the next one. And this is what's going to happen. You have a box from the previous uh, prediction, and it's relative to the diameter between a shoulder and, let's say, left knee. So that box, it's going to have some hyperparameters that you're going to choose. But it's going to focus around a joint. So your image is now going to be around a particular joint. You take that image, push it through your architecture, and then predict the displacements only. And this one you have to retrain. So you train your initial stage first, you use the prediction in addition to the ground truth, in addition to a box around the ground truth to 
train a separate neural network for a stage two. And then you can use this neural network to adjust the predictions of the previous model. So it's gonna have a multi-stage framework. One of them is looking globally. The other one is gonna look more locally around each joint. There is another question in the chat. Are the pose vectors the final output? Do the pose have actual meaning like jump? No. So for this uh, exercise, all we care about are the locations of the joints. And as soon as you know them, you are going to be able to draw the limbs between them. So here you don't care that this, is, this person is jumping or no. This is no more classification. You are locating the locations of those joints. There is a question in the chat. Are the DNNs for the stages happening in parallel, one for each joint? Uh, no. They are going to happen sequentially, and the training is going to happen sequentially. First, you train this, use its predictions to come up with the necessary data to train stage two. You train stage two, uh, you adjust the locations or the predictions from stage one, and then you go to the next stage, generate data based on stage two, and then train stage three and keep doing that. And the paper for this uh, particular data set, I'm going to tell you the data set, they're using three stages only. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. And the data sets are frames labeled in cinema, flick, and the other one is lit sports data set. So these are good data sets to start with exploring them. Now, a huge component of any machine learning framework or any task is what, are, what is going to be your evaluation metric. For instance, you can look at the percentage of correct parts. What is it measuring? It is measuring the detection rate of limbs. And limbs are connections between, for instance, your knee and the ankle. And then you're going to consider a limb as detected if the distance between your prediction and the true limb is at most half of the limb length. And for each one of these, you know the ground truth. So you're going to be able to compute this metric on your test data. Another metric is... Uh, you're going to consider a threshold, and then you're going to say a joint is considered detected if the distance between predicted and the true joint is within a threshold of the torso. And torso is exactly the distance between your left shoulder and the right hip. And actually, this torso is the one that you're going to use to give you these boxes for the next stages. So these are two evaluation metrics to evaluate this. Any questions? The cool thing about the second metric is that you can play around with the threshold and then it's going to give you curves that you can compare one method compared to the other one. And that threshold is telling you how strict you are because these predictions are not going to be perfect. Maybe it's a good idea to not be too strict, give it a little bit of threshold for them to be correct or to be considered correct. Okay, any other questions? Okay, perfect.